Yes, yes. Good Lord, when did oh, you get those yes. done? You know, oh my goodness. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm tied it up. No, no, no. You're dancing the baby. Hello. Yes. Yeah. How are you? I'll hold it. Good. Oh. I like you too. So how's dad with the baby? Oh, yeah. If I have to go to work with her, he, he's got to carry her. He's got to be with the baby. I had to carry the car seat in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> he's Mr. Dad with baby. Maddie was this big only yesterday. No, this one's a midget now. Hopefully she outgrows you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when are you going to have one? As soon as they tell me when, I'm coming out of command. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, what's this? That shootout reminds me of the uh... History oh. Channel. Oh, there's a documentary of it. It's 50 really? minutes. Yeah. It's basically... Um, early April when we were on the lioness measures with the Marines, we're not mentioned in it at all. The tide is finally turning for the weary men of 2-4. It's been a day of grinding combat. It started with a... You and I were on that one, weren't we? I know, that's when the Marines were first coming in, they got hit by an IED. And we went after a couple guys yeah. that did it. And they had a bunch of cash and stuff on them. talked about this. Without mentioning you guys in it, the guy got hit by an IED and then they found a lot of weapons. That was the first story that they told. <clears throat> it's funny because well, you recognize so much you know? stuff that's going on in this. And it's a lot of the missions that we went on and we supported. Yeah, you said I'm going to go in there. Yeah. Yep, that was our mission. Witness real life and death combat told for the first time by the men who were there. House to house, block by block. I had about 25 women that I could pull from to support the Team Lioness missions. There was every spectrum of physical and emotional capabilities there is, and almost every single one of them at one point participated in a Lioness mission. Some significantly more than others. It got so certain females were requested for certain missions, and, and that is more who went out. Captain Breslow, a captain, so she's senior in rank, very confident, very tactically and technically sound. If uh, I had to send soldiers to a school, Nava was the person to send. She was just friendly and outgoing. She always had a smile on her face. Rainey was like one of the senior enlisted women that I had in the organization. And Shannon was just strong and very good with a weapon and uh, just kind of a tough gal. in that video, it's kind of like they went out of their way to make sure that they didn't mention us because all those events that took place in those videos, we were there. Reinforcements make it to trapped Marines. They outshoot and outlast the enemy. Watch out! April was our, our worst month. We had a spike in, in casualties and engagements. The Marines had just gotten out there, and uh, this is the first time they started working with us. I found the transition from the Army to the Marines definitely a shock. The Marines, they're used to a lot of intense combat. They actually go into the city and draw out insurgents. There was supposedly a, a three-day jihad being planned. So we put together an operation to arrest two known insurgent leaders. The Lioness teams were assigned as support to the whiskey company. Women in the Team Lioness organization found themselves dismounted with the Marines as a team, and there was a lot of firefight type activity going on downtown, a lot of enemy activity. And that was a pretty steep learning curve going out and just working with them. And they went in about four different homes that evening, segregating the women from the men to the kind of 
calm their fears. It was one of the roughest months for us. Sometimes we kind of had to forcefully search these women and wrestle with them to let us, you know, do our job to search them. Soon after the raids kicked off, the mosques started calling for uh, for the local residents to kill us again. He was saying on there, um, grab your weapons, kill all Americans, kill all Americans. All the men, get your weapons and get out here, kill the Americans, the Americans are here. We got ambushed really bad. A couple of vehicles got hit. Over here. There was a female that started walking towards the firefight with her two children. She had an infant and a toddler, and I stopped her and tried to explain to her that they were fighting and that she was basically going to walk into the firefight, and uh, she just kept saying her husband. Your best thing is to make it out of the kill zone. Make sure you got all your people, everything you need. And I was just like, Shaking, I was so scared. And uh, I was running with that Marine firing team and <laughs> bullets everywhere. I remember looking at Rainy. She was sitting on a building on top of it in the street. And she looked at me and she's going like this. And I'm like, what the fuck is she doing, you know? And all of a sudden I looked and everybody was gone. I was the only one in the street. There's insurgents all around me firing at me. And I'm like, son of a bitch, you know? I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, Shannon! <laughs> We were trying to find a place to provide cover and visibility, and we ended up going into a building, because almost every Iraqi building, you can get up onto the roof. Right, he's like, we're going like this, like trying to get my attention, get over here, something, run, because in Army, you tap back. You tap every man back, and you let them know you're moving. These bastards didn't say nothing to me, just left me there. So I ran for my damn life and caught back up with my firing team. When I got there, I kicked the squad leader right in the nuts for leaving me. I sure did. <laughs> 